Should the Washington Wizards trade back with the San Antonio Spurs for the fourth and the eighth picks in this year's draft? Yes. What prospects should we target with the fourth and the eighth picks in the draft? Ah, we're going to talk about it next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again. I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right, everybody. Um... As you guys know, in the previous videos and in the NBA news right now that the Atlanta Hawks and the San Antonio Spurs uh, were rumored in talks for the Atlanta Hawks to trade the number one overall pick for the San Antonio Spurs fourth and eighth overall pick. But wait a minute. Should the Wizards be that team to trade back? I'm going to say yes. And what prospects should we target with the fourth and the eighth pick considering we might keep the 26th and the 51st? So uh, we're going to get into that. And Terrence Shannon Jr. and Trenton Flowers couple of the very intriguing prospects at number 26 overall. So we're going to look at their scouting report and see, could they indeed be good fits in the DMV? So let's start with, um, let's, um, let's dig in, shall we? Now, should the Wizards trade back for the fourth and the eighth picks from the San Antonio Spurs? And I'm going to say yes. Now, how could we make that deal? And what prospects should we look at in this year's draft at the fourth and eighth overall pick? And then we'll look at the 26th to 51st and kind of a small mock draft. But um, Trading back, obviously, as you know, uh, the Atlanta Hawks hold the number one overall pick, and you know, the, the future's kind of up in the air in Atlanta. You know, do they trade Dejounte Murray? Do they trade uh, Trey Young right now? Clint Capella, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, um, who's who's rumored to be um, kind of a target for the Wizards, even though I don't think it's realistic goal. But um, Clint Capella's on his way to Atlanta, so could it be rebuilding, or could they try to go younger and build around either Trey Young or Dejounte Murray? You know, we'll see, you know, it's unclear right now, but should the Wizards go ahead and trade back with the San Antonio Spurs? Absolutely. I definitely think that that would be a really uh, best case scenario for the Washington Wizards. Now, how do we get there? Um, there was a trade online that had the Wizards trading the number two overall pick for the San Antonio Spurs fourth and eighth overall picks. But we sent them Tristan Vucevic. Now, wait a minute. I know a lot of people are big on Tristan Vucevic, and I am too, but I will say this. Uh, we know what the situation is with Tristan Vucevic, with him being a second-round pick. Um, he, he got a two-year contract, and this is an expiring contract for him. This is a contract year. So this is kind of a prove-it year, kind of like Marvin Bagley III, who also was on an expiring deal. Um, they're both kind of prove-it deals or, you know, prove-it seasons for both Tristan Vucevic and Marvin Bagley III. So including Tristan Vucevic in a potential move to acquire the fourth and the eighth overall pick of this year's draft, I would actually consider making that move because, yes, um, he fits the timeline in D.C. He's a nice young center at seven foot who, you know, he can defend. You know, he can shoot from mid-range and three-point shot. Now he still has to work. You know, he's, he's still got a lot of work ahead of him, especially on the offensive side of the ball um, where he's m most polished. And the def uh, defensive side of the ball where, yes, he's a rim protector, but he's also a guy that, you know, when you look at his lateral movement on defense, he got exposed. You know, he's very slow in lateral movement on defense, so he definitely has to get, you know, he definitely has to work on his side of his uh, defense. But um, would I say no? I, I would actually say yes, man, um, because you're acquiring the fourth and the eighth pick, and you're kind of adding that to the 26th overall and the 51st pick. So you potentially have three first-rounders and, a, you know, a second-round pick. So I, and, again, you know, for a team like the Washington Wizards, that is money because – it's all about development. You know, again, year two of, of a rebuild. So right now you're trying to start a youth movement. You're trying to get younger. And it's all about scouting and development at this point. Now, you know, does Kyle Kuzin get moved? How do, how do, how would that impact a potential trade back for the fourth and the eighth? Well, you know, I, I think that you don't necessarily need to move into San Antonio because um, because right now we don't know what San Antonio is trying to do either. Um, yes, we're trying to build a winner around Wimbenyama. Um, would they take a vet like Kyle Kuzma? Maybe, because uh, I know they do have wings um, already in San Antonio. So we'll see. I'm going to pull up their um, depth chart. But um, I think that even with Kyle Kuzma on the roster, that should not stop you from 
picking up a prospect who could potentially be your power forward in the future. And the same thing with Jordan Poole, where, yes, Jordan Poole, looking at this contract and his age, for, for probably, you know, at least next three years, he's probably going to be the starting point guard. You know, we, you know, again, a lot of dominoes need to fall. And we'll see what goes on with Tyus Jones. Or do they retain him? If so, you probably see Jordan Poole going to six man. And then, and again, that changes things as far as their draft strat- strategy and even the strategy with uh, free agency. But they get the fourth and eighth pick. I can see them um, trading the number two overall. Because right now, again, everything's up in the air. You know, one, two, three, you're looking at your top three um, draft choices are probably going to be Alex R, Zachary Sache, and Donovan Klingon. Those have been the most consistent prospects at the one through three. So, you know, with the fourth and the eighth, chances are we're not going to get Alex R. Chances are we're not going to get Donovan Klingon. And chances are we're not going to get Zachary Sache. So uh, look at our prospect. But, again, uh, before we move on to what prospects, what would it take to get there? I think that the number two overall – with a young player like Tristan Vucevic, I think backing up Wimbledon Yama in San Antonio, um, I think could be a really good move to acquire the fourth and eighth overall picks. Now, they could be subject to more, you know, they could ask for Kuz. Um, let me pull up the depth chart for the San Antonio Spurs because I, I know that they have a, a few guys on the wing. So let me take a look at it real quick. All right, so looking at the wing situation, uh, I mean, Jeremy Sohan, is your power forward right now, uh, pairing him in the front court with uh, Victor Wimbyama, but small forward is Julian Champagne. So, um, and then the backup is Keldon Johnson. So could Kyle Kuzma realistically be a replacement for Julian Champagne? Yeah. So I guess we'll revise it real quick. How can we get the fourth and eighth picks, all right? Um, chances are you, put, you probably could move Kyle Kuzma to San Antonio um, because, again, his contract is team-friendly not only for the watch the Wizards, but for prospective teams who want to add a scoring punch without breaking the bank, right? So um, he could he fit long – I mean, I, you know, I'm going to say long-term because they're really in the same situation as we are, but I think that you could play Kuz at the three. Now, so let's, let's go ahead and let's make a trade proposal here, right? For the fourth and eighth picks in his year's draft, what would I trade for that? I would definitely look at moving Kyle Kuzma to San Antonio because we, we mentioned it veteran leadership you know they need veteran leadership in san antonio so i would move the number two overall and i would move kyle kuzma to the san antonio spurs for the fourth and the, and the eighth overall picks um but looking at the previous proposal um you can also look at number two and tristan vucevic for the fourth and eighth overall pick so you guys let me know is that attainable you think it's realistic um because right now look you know Atlanta's looking to trade number one possibly for the fourth and eighth pick so would the san antonio spurs be enticed by the number two overall pick where they very well could be in position to get uh Zachary Sache or Alex R. And I think they very well could listen to the proposal, in my opinion. So what what players would I be looking at at the fourth and eighth overall picks? Well, one name pops up and is a guy who's been rising up draft boards and a guy who I think could really develop into a star. I'm looking at Matas Bazilis, man. Um at, at fourth overall, I would roll with Matas Bazilis, man. He's a guy who he can play um you know, he's got size, he's got athleticism. He's a guy who, yes, his shot needs work, but you definitely see high scoring potential from the kid, man. And he's a kid who I think is definitely fi- uh, top five potential, in my opinion. So I would roll with Mataz Bazilis, man, because to me, he could potentially be a wing, but to me, he's the power forward of the future. Now, um, because because right now we're looking at it as if Donovan Kling is already off the board, if Alex Starr is already off the board, and uh, Zachary Sache is already off the board. So you could very well wait for the eighth pick, the goal get a center, whether it's um, whether it's Khalil Ware, whatever it's Zach Eady. Because I think that if you go, whether, you know, either if you go um, Matas Bazelis with number four or you go stuff, uh, Stephon Castle with number four, you go get Khalil Ware or you go get Zach Eady with the number eight overall pick. And then, you know, when you get around number 26, then you're looking at Tyler Smith or you very well could go with, Kaishan George. And, and here's another twist to the number 26 pick because if you go Tyler Smith with the number 26 pick, then you don't, do you still make that move for Matas Bazilis? You know, we'll see because we're looking at needs not only for the immediate, but for the future. And again, we're rebuilding. So, <laughs> but, you know, Matas Bazilis to me, you make that move number four because to me, he's the, he's the fourth best prospect. Now, you can look at Stefan Castle. Could he slide in there at the shooting guard next to Jordan Poole? Or Ty, um, Tyus Jones, if they retain him, yeah, he's a taller guy who is who has expressed that he wants to play guard. Now he says he wants to play point guard. I think he needs to be a little realistic um, as far as what he expects, uh, you know, from teams because I think he should look at maybe 
broaden it a little bit. Say you can play two guard because that was a big thing about um, Stephon Castle. He, he wants to play point guard. So um, if you go Stephon Castle number four, you definitely, definitely go center at number eight, in my opinion. And number 26, you don't, even if you don't go get Matas Bazilis, you can go get Tyler Smith. And, or if you go Matas Bazilis at number four, you can go with Kaishan George. So, you know, like I said, you, you very well can come out of this draft with a power forward of the future, a center of the future, maybe grab a guard. You know, Kaishan George is a guy who can definitely score. He can definitely provide that scoring punch off the bench. So I think that, yes, if we trade back for the number four and number eight overall picks from the San Antonio Spurs, whether it's for Tristan Vucevic in the second or whether it's Kyle Kuzma in the second, I think you definitely go Matas Bazilis with the number four. I'm looking to get a center at the number eight, whether it's Zach Eady or Kilo Ware. And number 26, um, depending on what we do with number two or even number eight, I'm either going Tata Smith or I'm going Kaishan George. Um, so the 51st is, is still a little murky right now. Like I said, I'm a um, couple of videos this week. I'm definitely going to do some content for the 51st overall pick and really dive into the second round. But so I'm kind of looking at the first round. So, yeah, if we, it, in my eyes, in my opinion, if the Washington Wizards trade back with the San Antonio Spurs for the fourth overall and the eighth overall, the prospects I'm looking at at fourth and eighth is definitely Matas Bazilis at number four. I'm looking at Zach Eady or Kalil Ware at number eight. And I'm probably looking at Tyler Smith or Kashan George at number 26. So you guys comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's talk ball. So uh, we're going to talk about Terrence Shannon Jr., who has been cleared from wrongdoing with his off-the-court legal woe. So could he be an under-the-radar move at number 26? And Trent Flowers, another guy coming out of Australia. Could this guy, again, be another option at number 26? We're going to talk about it. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. So, summertime means baseball, Lord Hammers, the NBA Finals, and more. You can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. You can use the bet on everything for the Finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the ballpark. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Had to turn down the volume without that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports, uh, sports streaming channel. Program free every day. They bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every single day. All right, so let's get into Terrence Shannon Jr. And this is one guy that a lot of people have brought up as – uh. A guy to look at now. He is actually he has top ten potential. Now he had off the court legal woes that I'm not going to get into, but he has been cleared. So should he be an option at number twenty six? Well, we'll see. Uh, let's take a look at his uh, intangibles real quick. Uh, he is six six, two hundred and fifteen pounds with a six eight wingspan out of Illinois. Uh, the agency is clear. He's not a uh, clutch. Is his agent? Is his agency that represented him? Um. Looking at his stats for this previous season, he has 23 points a game. Oh, man. Four rebounds, 2.3 assists, 0 0.9 blocks, and one steal a game. Now, he did shoot 47.5% for the field, and he shot 36.2% from three, and he shot 80% from the charity strike. So just looking at the numbers and not looking at his strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons yet, what do I like about the numbers? Well, obviously, you know, the scoring, 23 points a game, you know, playing it, um, at a Big Ten school, Illinois. So, you know, playing in the Big Ten, you know, hated to love it. You know, the Big Ten has kind of a, you know, <laughs> a hated to love it type of uh, reputation. You know, you, uh, some talent has come out of the Big Ten, but not as much as you compare it to Big East, SEC, other conferences in college basketball. Um, but I like the 23 points a game. Now, the rebounds, obviously, if it, at his size, you kind of see the rebounds go up. 2.3 assists, not too shabby. Now, the defensive stats, eh, you want still a game, but uh, 0 0.9 blocks if you go ahead and round it up a block a game. Um, so his shooting stats I do like, 47.5% uh, of the field, 36.2% is around league average last year, uh, between 35 and 36, and 80% 80, 80 from the charity strike. Eh, you kind of want to see that rise, especially for his size, but not too bad. So, again, um, like I said, I'm not going to get into it, but um, he was cleared. He was actually uh, looking at it real quick. He was charged with rape for an alleged incident that took place three months earlier. His attorney said there's no DNA evidence from him and have motion for a hearing and to exclude expert.
testimony. So it looks and looking at other reports, it said that he was in the process of being cleared. So um, obviously, again, looking at him, he is a top 10 talent. That's you can't deny that. He's a guy that was slated to be a top 10 guy. And he very well, you know, obviously there's going to be some teams who are going to be scared off by um, his situation in court, whether, you know, he was, he was guilty or not guilty. You know, very often not people treat it like he's guilty and teams are going to be scared off by the process. Now, he it's been shown that there's no wrongdoing. So should you still target Terrence Shannon Jr.? Absolutely. He's a top 10 talent. I mean, like I said, he's been cleared of any wrongdoing. So, Right now, we just think about basketball, and, and you know, looking at a basketball term, the kid can play. And if he, you know, if he's going to slide, hey, let him let him slide. Let's do the electric slide, baby, because let the man slide. I mean, if he if we can get Terrence Shannon Jr. at number twenty six, I mean, you make that move um, because again, he is a top ten talent. So, what do I like about Terrence? Uh, what are his pros? What are his strengths? Uh, number one, he's a high energy player on the wing, good length, exceptional athleticism. Again, he's six six with a six eight. Wingspan, the kid can move. He's very athletic on the wing, man, which is where I would look for him to play would be a uh, small four. Um, he's a dog in the paint. I mean, he can throw down dunks in transition and half court sets. This guy's going to attack the basket. He's going to get to the free throw line. He's definitely going to eat at the charity strike. He's a guy who's going to flow through the lane and he's going to he's going to posterize some people, man. So if you do not want to be on poster, just let him slide through, man, because the kid can definitely fly. Um, a couple of more things I do like about Terrence is um push the pace his speed which he excels in transition which we need that because again we were number one in pace last year and this team wants to go faster the players want to go faster the coach staff want to go faster and the front office want to make this team faster and i think that terrence shannon jr would fit that mold again on the wing he's a guy who can move he can definitely move with some pace man uh and some other things i like about him man uh he has an nba ready physique so, you know, he can effectively guard multiple positions. So, you know, that's another thing that we know this front office likes, this coaching staff likes, versatility. You know, if you look at a lot of guys we already have on the roster, and Denny Avia, Corey Kispert, Bilal Kulabali, even Jordan Poole, um, Kyle Kuzma, we have a lot of guys who are versatile, who can play multiple positions. Um, you know, if you look at Denny, he can play, probably play every position out there, right? Um, or he can guard every position. Now, he, he's best served as a wing or a power forward, but, you can see him at the two guard in certain situations, but you know, the point being is he's versatile. The same thing with you know Bilal is very versatile. It's two, the three, we'll see. Um, Corey Kispert is the same. You know he can play the two, the three. Um, so there's a lot of versatility. So I think this is going to be the biggest thing about this draft is they're going to target guys who are versatile. You know what I mean? They're going to definitely going to target guys that are versatile, and I think that Terrence Shannon Jr. fits that mold. Now with every pro. There is a con. So what are the weaknesses? What are the cons about his game? Well, defensive development hasn't matched his expectations because, you know, his wingspan at yeah, 6'8 is still, if you look at the NBA, it's still a smaller wingspan at 6'8. Um, right now, he lacks a, re a reliable floater and struggles with shooting efficiency. So efficiency is definitely something that we struggle with with guys already on the roster, especially looking at the vets, Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole, where, look, both of them are high-level scores. But at times, they have struggled with efficiency and definitely looking to shoot high percent of shots, which is something they both struggle with. And this is definitely something that Terrence struggles with. Um, you know, uh, you know, he definitely needs to add a reliable floater um, because, you know, you got to have that in-between game, you know, between the shooting three-pointers and dunking on folk. You got to be able to have a floater, you know, be able to have other tools in your office of repertoire, right? Um, and then struggling with the shooting um, efficiency, you know, he's, he's definitely, definitely has to work on that. You know, again, it comes with, you know, shooting high percent of shots. You know, shooting good looks, man, having good looks when you shoot the ball, man. And uh, you can argue that, you know, does that really go to the point guard? It provided him good looks. Yeah, to a certain degree, but he's got to learn to shoot high percent of shots. You know, like I said, we we we've, we struggle with that already in Washington. But uh, there's, that's one thing that kind of concerns me about Terrence Shannon. And one more thing, um, concerns about the shot mechanics and tendency to rush shots. So, again, you know, taking your time, sh shooting, shooting a fluid jump shot, and shooting a high percentage shot. And like I said, we are developing. We're in, the, we're in the development stage, right? It's year two of a rebuild. So those are areas that I think he can't get better. I think that we have the coaching staff who, you know, who can work with him on that. I think they can get that right when it comes to Terrence Shannon Jr., you know, because um, are they – are they do they scare me? Nah, they don't. I mean, are they red flags to a certain degree? Yes. But I think that if you look at other guys in the roster, you know, Denny was a guy where his shot was something that needed to improve. And we saw that with work with, you know, with proper, just putting time into his shot, 
he became a better player. He became a better shooter, and he broke out offensively. So, you know, going, getting back to Terrence Shannon Jr., man, I think that, you know, his, his you know, adding a reliable floater, you know, being more efficient with your shot, you know, having better mechanics and taking your time and not rushing your shot or shooting low percentage shots, I think there are areas that he can definitely work on, man. So Terrence Shannon Jr., again, top 10 talent. Um, he dealt with his off-the-court issues, but, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, right now the the Chargers gone. So you make that move, and if he slides to twenty six, you make that move. Now he's been slated all over the place as far as where he's getting drafted in mock drafts, man. But again, you know, six months ago, probably before the legal issues, but uh, six months ago he was top ten talent. So if he slides to twenty six, you make that move. Now, um, do I mean making him? You know, I'm, obviously we're not looking to get him at number two. Um, do, would you make that move if we trade back in? Maybe. But I would I would pick him up if he slides to 26. So we're going to look at another candidate at number 26, Trenton Flowers, who is currently playing in Australia. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. So passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed, guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all, with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's get back into it, everybody. And we're going to take a look at Trenton Flowers, um, which is another guy that I would really, really like at number 26, man. Um, so we're going to take a look at him real quick, and then we're going to look at um, the itinerary for the rest of the week, and we're going to um, enjoy a night like we always do. So let's get into Trenton Flowers. Now, Trenton Flowers is 6'6", six, six, or really 6'6", six, six, but he could slide to 6'7". He's kind of in between right now with a 6'8 wingspan, kind of like Terrence Shannon Jr., uh, 208 pounds. Now, he currently played for the Adelaide 36ers out of Australia. Uh, his agent is Daniel Hazan. So looking at the stats from his previous season. Now he did average 5.5 points. So, you know, eh, you know, uh, but 3.1 rebounds, 0 0.6 assists, 0 0.1 blocks, and 0 0.2 steals. He shot 43.6% for the field, 35.7% from three, and 64.9% from foul line. Now, locked on load there. Um, a lot of red flags. Um you know, 5.5 points, you know, if he's a defensive minded guy, yeah, you know, I mean, as at his size, 3.1 rebounds, I definitely want to see him get closer to five, six rebounds a game. Uh, assist numbers, you know, you still would want to see two assists a game. Um, just based off the stats, you know, defensively, there's a lot to want, at, you know. You know, I mean, you, you, just looking at the stats, you can, you, I can just tell he's not very active on defense, man. Um you know, when you look at your field goal percentage, you usually want around 45% and, and above. Um, usually league average around 40, uh, 45, 46%. He shot 43.6%. So there's, there's still room for improvement, especially from three, you know, three point shot. He shot 35.7%. So league average around 35, 36. So um, he's right there, but you definitely want to see a lot more improvement. Um, and it's 64.9% from the charity strike. Now he definitely has to get better at that, man. Um, because free throws are free for a reason, right? Um, what are some pros? What are what are some things I like about him? Well, he's athletic, you know, just like again, just like Terrence Shannon, very athletic. He has the ability to be a microwave score. Um, can generate paint touches and bunches at six eight. You know, he has a really nice touch in the paint. Where I think that, you know, yeah, he has a shot, but I, you know, with his size, I think that you're gonna you definitely want to see him you know, eat more in the paint, man. And he has the ability to definitely contribute more in the paint. Um, one thing I really like, or a couple things, playmaking reads and finds good looks near the basket. I mean, you know, he definitely has some playmaking potential and he has some tight handles enough to make play meets. So he could definitely, you know, you can definitely see him potentially being a playmaker to a certain degree, right? Um, he definitely has high, tight enough handles to make plays for others. And his playmaking reads, again, are dope. They're on, they're on point, their money, right? So he finds good looks around the basket. Now, he's not a guy who's going to be like a point guard, but he's a guy at the four or potentially a, a undersized five who can definitely get other people involved to a certain degree. Uh, sometimes I like, he is a respectable shooter. 
Now I get it. Um, the points of game, you know, I think that he's very, he's definitely very raw, you know, from the scouting report and from the, the, from the tail of the tape, man, very, very raw, man. But, you know, I think that again, with the right environment, right system and the right coaching staff, he could definitely be a contributor, but he's very raw. So, I mean, you, you're definitely going to have to take your time with him and definitely develop him. Right. Um, he has all the tools to become a standout defender. The defense is there. It's just, you know, like I said, going off the stats, you know, the stats didn't really blow out in, to me, you know, 0 0.1 blocks and 0 0.2 steals. But so I guess he's not a guy who's going to get a lot of turnovers, man. But uh, he's a guy who's definitely going to be respectable as far as being a really good defender, man. Uh, so maybe, you know, with proper development, could you see those numbers go up? Absolutely, man. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to like about this kid. Now, what are his weaknesses? Well, he has to compete compete on the defensive end a lot more consistency. He needs more consistency on the defensive end. Like I said, going off the stats, his stats don't scream out at you. But he, if you look at the tape, man, he can defend, but he's got to be more consistent. He's got to show a lot more consistency. Um, a couple more things. He definitely needs to get stronger because, you know, look, when you look at switches, man, when he switches on the bigger players, man, that's where we're going to catch him slipping. He's got to he's got to add some strength, man, to be able to go in there. And if he gets switched off to onto a, a center, he's going to have to be able to have that strength to be able to deal with some of these centers in the league, man. Um, so you know, those are um the pros and the cons of Trenton Flowers, man. Uh, like I said, he is playing out of Australia this previous season with the Adelaide 36ers, man. Um, there's this there, there are a lot the, a lot of like about this kid. Now he's very raw, man. So do you make this move at 26? I must say no. If he if he slides to the second round, maybe I would definitely look at picking him up. But I, I I would not make that move at 26 because I think there are more floor more more polished um players at that draft position. You know, like I said, I, Tyler Smith's still there. Uh, Kaishan George is still there. So I mean, I, I think there are better options. You know, nothing against Trenton Flowers because I think he is a very intriguing prospect. But I think that there's, there's other attractive ways to go at 26 for the Washington Wizards. And I think that yes, do I think that this organization could definitely help him develop absolutely you know because with brian keith and david vanderpool and obviously they need to fill out the rest of their staff but the biggest thing with david vanderpool and, and brian keith is development they know how to develop talent so i think they're in good ends you know any prospect that comes that comes out of this draft whether it's at number two whether we trade back whether we trade back in whether you know at 26 or at 51 i think we have the staff we have the, the scouting department we have the front office that is going to develop these guys they're going to get these guys ready to contribute down the road, man. So I think that any way you go in this draft, um, we're going to be all right because we have everything in place to help develop these young guys, man, which wasn't always the case in D.C., as we all know. So you guys comment below. What are you guys thinking about Terrence Shannon Jr. and Trenton Flowers? Would you consider him a 26 or would you let him slide or what are you thinking? So, again, appreciate you guys as always, man. Uh, like I said, as always, appreciate you guys for taking the time out of your day to rock with your boy, man. So definitely comment below. Do you think the Wizards should definitely trade back for the fourth and the eighth overall picks in this year's draft from the San Antonio Spurs? Why and who would you give up? And looking at Terrence Shannon Jr. and Trenton Flowers, would you make that move at 26? Comment below and let me know what you're thinking. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It is now is also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you, 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. All right, so before we roll, everybody, um, this week, uh, the next episode, I'm going to talk about Clint Capella. Uh, the Washington Wizards have been linked to Clint Capella, so should we make that move? Why and why not? And we're going to look at the 51st pick, and we're going to look at some prospects in the second round, and we'll see if Will Dawkins can – pull another rabbit out of the hat and find another jewel in the rough in the second round in this year's NBA draft. So again, appreciate you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow night. Hail to the Wizards and peace. Everybody take care.